Hello everybody, Mr. Storm here. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, we got the remaining unmanned science um, probe back from Elu, and we used that to unlock some new tech. And then we designed, built, launched a new reactor component that is going to serve as the base for a new interplanetary research vessel so that's kind of where we got to you know by the end of last episode so um in between then and now i have done a little bit of work you can see that we have some more science again because so i've actually run some missions a couple of runs to the moon to hit a couple of biomes that I hadn't gotten to yet, so ran a few more moon landings. Again, something we'd, we've done a bunch. Gathered a bunch more science, brought it home. I also took a load of science from the moon to the uh, space station to be processed through the lab. So that'll actually yield, hopefully, a lot more science over time. Um, but that will take some time. So, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to continue working on the design of the new ship that I'm building. And there is one change that I've gone ahead and made, and I'm going to go ahead and hop up there real quick, because I've done a bunch of prototyping, I guess I'll call it. Prototyping of this ship off-screen in some copies of this... Uh, all that turned on um, in copies of the save just so that you know I can work from what I have available you know, so I can figure out okay what things am I gonna need to unlock and how do I want to design some of the components because I've actually been able to work out a few issues and adjust some of the design a little bit from that process so you know we'll go ahead and see how that's gonna look as I actually kind of create it live here. Um, so, we have the heavy reactor module. These landed, yeah, these things, I'm just gonna go ahead and. New lander. Yeah, that's a uh, part from the, uh, the new. The lander that I used. And this is gonna... Well, it's actually gonna come back and interact with the moon again. Interesting. I wonder if that's gonna eventually boost it. You know, it's gonna get another gravity kick. I wonder if that'll boost it into inter uh, interplanetary space. Eh, maybe. But here's what we're looking for. The heavy reactor module. I decided that um, my original concept of two engines was mm, insufficient, I guess I'll say. So, what I did was I created a slightly altered version of the same reactor module, which was this is the one we launched before. And launch this one. This one does not have the docking ports. But this one has some RCS to allow it to dock. And so we now have the capacity for four engines. And so that is what we're going to do. We're going to put four of those big new electro uh, electromagnetoplasma dynamic thrusters on here. So, that is going to be the plan. Now, of course, we can't fire up these reactors just yet because I don't have any radiators or anything. So, you know, we'll get there eventually. Just wanted to show that. All right, so back to the Space Center. So, what we're going to need to do is we are going to need 
Um, actually, first thing I need to do is unlock some new battery tech, because I determined that I needed it. So we'll go ahead and grab that first. And that is going to be here. Specialized electrics. Primarily because it's going to get us the two and a half meter diameter battery banks. So we'll go ahead and research that. We'll grab that. See, then this gets us, I think, the uh, 3.75 meter. I don't know if we ever actually get a 5 meter battery pack. These would be nice. But I ultimately don't think they're necessary. So, what is that? Starship blanket photovoltaic array. Twenty five per second. Exotic solar five hundred per second. That thing's gotta be ridiculously huge. Um yeah, but that should be enough for what we're gonna be doing for now. Alright. So what I've determined is Um well actually let me let this load in first. My original plan had been to use these with the lithium filler tanks. But what I actually determined is that the new tanks that I unlocked these tanks are actually better. They hold more, and in terms of mass per unit of fuel, they're lighter overall. I mean, they're—I mean, it—it it is you know, in total heavier, but you know, on a per unit of fuel basis, it's it's more efficient for its mass. So that is what we're going to use as our primary lithium fuel tank. So, this is going to be the initial fuel tank. And so we're going to need these big docking ports, linear docking ports. Now we're going to need Clampertron down there. And for here, it's going to need the remote guidance. Oh, no, the other remote guidance unit. And we're actually going to use a bunch of procedural parts here, just for looks purposes. Uh, because I could, you know, very easily just go in here and say. You know, we got the new battery pack, we just slap the battery pack on there, and that will do. But, I wanted to make this look a little bit better. And so we're going to go with the procedural battery pack. I'm going to kick the diameter up to two and a half. Well, you actually lower the... Uh... Lower the how tall it is. And I think I can probably even lower how tall that is even more. Because this is going to be a very big ship. It's going to have a lot of parts, and it's going to be heavy. It's going to be massive. So, my mass budget and my part number budget, I want to kind of keep as low as I can. So, 
that's going to be the plan. So we're going to just bring what we need. Bring what I need without much more than that. And I think what I want to do, because I really actually like this texture, is when we go with the Atlas texture, it's a shiny silver texture on the outside there. I'm gonna, we're going to kind of go with a, with a silver theme for the engine module because, you know, the tanks are silver, the you know the struts and structures are silver and gray so we'll go ahead and stick with that same look and feel now what I'm gonna need is RCS tanks yes RCS tanks and I'm gonna go with a procedural RCS tank and the plan is to make this a smooth cone. I think smooth cone? Polygon? Yeah, smooth cone. And we want the bottom to be two and a half. And the top to be zero. So it's a nice kind of rounded dome. And then we're going to go with that very same atlas texture on here. Unfortunately, the textures don't quite line up. But oh well. Or what I could do is we just rearrange things a little bit. We put the battery there, we put that guy there, we put that guy there. To make the uh, the seam there a little bit less jarring. But these big shiny domes on the top for the RCS tanks, I kind of like. Now, do I need it that tall? Ooh. Do I need it a full meter tall, or can I go with like 65? Yeah, I should to go with that. Okay, now it's going to need RCS. Now I am not putting any solar panels on these because I'm going to hope that the battery will last us long enough to get docked. We'll see. Hmm. Okay, so RCS thrusters. What am I gonna go for? I think these are the ones I'm going to use. There. And there. And there we go. There is one of the main tank segments. This one doesn't have the engine on it, obviously, because we're going to be bringing the engine later. So, actually, what I want to do is I want to reroute the part to the docking port, and that kind of flips it around weirdly like that. But I want to make this a sub-assembly. So we're going to go ahead and drop that in as a sub-assembly. I'm going to call this the uh, upper lithium tank. I should know what that is. Save it. Okay. So now I should be able to bring them in. Yep, there we go. Okay, we're going to need a rocket that can launch them, and we're going to be bringing four of those up to the, uh, the construction site. So, I'm going to need one a rocket that can launch four of them at once, because why launch one at a time when I can launch all four? Uh, and the way I'm going to do that, I kind of uh, tested a couple of options for this before, but we're going to do it this way. I'm going to take the procedural structural element here. So I need a central kind of spar structure. 
I'm gonna make it about uh, 12, 12 meters long. Yeah, 1.25 wide should be fine. And we'll make this, uh, I don't know, that texture. That'll work. And it's gonna need um, ports on it. Docking ports. Now, down here, we're gonna need a control unit. We're gonna need a battery, at least one battery. And I'm gonna need a structural adapter. And we'll probably use that one. Now I am gonna be putting solar panels on here. So we're gonna use these solar panels. Actually, let me, uh, let me try six, six of those. All right, they should be able to supply power. And so this is kind of our, our payload connector, payload adapter, call it. And so this tank is then going to go ahead and slap on there and we're gonna bring all four of them. Twelve meters was probably too long. Okay. Let's bump that down to something like maybe nine meters. I don't think it really matters. And having some extra clearance won't be a bad thing. So there we go. Now, that's a lot of mass. That's 117.3 tons that's going to need to be put in orbit. So, we're going to need a big rocket. We're going to need a very big rocket. So, we got brand spanking new 5 meter rocket parts. So let's uh, get the fairing set up for that. All right, that ought to work. Want to make sure that is on clamshell deployment. Okay. So if we do by cross-section profile for five meter parts, that'll get us what we've got. What do I have here? We have this tank. That's a big, heavy tank. Um, it might be better to go with that tank. Now, the only actual five meter engine section is this. And it gives 740 meters per second of delta V. I mean, that's good for maneuvering. I wonder if I could make this work better. Um, I haven't tried any kind of like um, interstage adapters or anything. That's far too large. Um, adapter. Upper mount, lower mount, no. No. This one? Okay, that one. 
two 1.25s, select mounting. If I went with six 1.25s. Or one two and a half. No, no, no. Four 1.25s. And that should still have like a mount in the middle, right? So, like, if I did a, like, a, no, what need a stack separator? We actually have those spots down there. Like, if I put in the five meter stack separator there, it would put a shroud on it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That works. Okay. So... Can I get more Delta V? I almost guarantee that I can. Um, because, let's see, what's the uh, specific impulse here in vacuum? 300? If I went for 1.25 meter engines... A cryogenic... Cryogenic? I could go cryogenic. That would make it lighter. You're 465. What's the difference between these two? Uh, let's see. Five hundred and sixty five meters per second. Nah, no, no, no. Uh, we will stick with uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. All right, so what type of engines could I potentially throw on here? We got these guys. Well, those are the same specific impulse, so they really wouldn't provide any um, additional benefit. Uh, you are 335, you are 320. 906 meters per second. With one in the center. 902. Ninety kilonewtons, two hundred and thirty kilonewtons, eight hundred and forty nine meters per second. Six of them. Ah, uh, we gotta have like a high efficiency vacuum. engine here somewhere 350 894 meters per second nine hundred and seventeen meters per second that works better Three twenty-five. You're three fifty, but you provide a thousand kilonewtons of thrust. A mega newton per engine. Those engines would lift this whole beast off the ground. Two point one three thrust of weight. don't think we really need that much. V 
these guys should be more than enough. Yes. Okay, we'll go with that. All right, let's throw that five meter coupler on there. There we are. And uh, next is going to be this big stage here. With, with this engine on it, that gives me 2,196 meters per second of delta V. That won't be quite enough. Oh, uh, one other thing that I need to put on here is, are going to be... Um, reaction control wheels. I'm actually going to put a bunch of them on here. Well, a bunch as in three. There we go. Three reaction control wheels to make sure that we can maneuver this, this monster, um, at least the upper stage anyway, without turning on the RCS thrusters because I want to conserve as much monopropellant as I can. Um, I think yeah, five meters. I actually looked into this. The um, the comparable rocket that um, real world rocket at five meter diameter is going to be the Delta. Four? I think. Because a 3.75 is kind of the same diameter as the Falcon 9. And 5 meters is like the Delta 4. And I'm trying to decide if I want to go... Uh, we're going to want some strap-on boosters here. Do I want to go with these? Or do I want to go with like more like a... Like a Delta Four Heavy look. Which is three of these main tanks. That may be a bit overkill. I think what we might go with instead are SRBs. Kind of make this look like uh, a mini SLS. I'll need these. Because SLS is going to be a huge beast of a rocket. Now I can go with these Thors, but actually we have better ones. We have the Thor 2s, the 10S, the, the small version of the Thor 2s, and the big version of the Thor 2s. Let's throw a couple of the big Thor 2s on here, and uh, let's kind of see what we what we see here. That gives me 520 meters per second on delta V, but only a 0.81, so we're actually going to need the main engine to fire.
Well, this is Kerbal Space Program. So, when in doubt, when in doubt, come on, grab that part, please. There we go. More boosters. Let's go with four instead of two. Now what are we looking at? Mm. Don't know if four is going to be enough. Six. Six boosters. Okay. Now we're looking at numbers that I like better. It's still probably overkill. Oh, I guarantee you it's overkill. But, I think as I said before, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So, throw some uh, cones on those. And uh, then let's get this thing ready to, uh, to fly. Alright, let's, let's get you properly positioned here and we're gonna want some launch clamps there we are all right so launch clamps solid boosters and these are gonna use a 1.67 thrust weight so they'll be more than enough to get the, the vehicle off the ground on its own then we'll uh, the Ditch those, light that, ditch that, light that, fairings. Looks like it'll work. All right. This is the uh, upper lithium tank lifter. And I'll probably use this same thing for the engine modules because we're going to try and bring all four of those up at once as well. All right. Let's go ahead and launch it. And we'll use the autopilot. Unless it doesn't work, and then I'll have to do it by hand, but you know. The autopilot just makes things simpler and more precise. Alright, ascent guidance, make sure 100 kilometers, make sure auto warp is on, yep, engage the autopilot, and uh, let's see if this beast can actually fly. Hit it. Here we've got um, 30 seconds until the SRBs burn out. Have 
uh, SRB separation in five seconds. If my numbers are right. Give or take. Actually, I think time's running a little bit slower. Then real time. And there they go. Alright. Main engine, start. And that's going to burn for about another minute or so. A minute of in-game time. Because the game will slow the time down to help the physics engine keep things from coming apart. If it needs to. And there's a lot of bits here, so... Not surprising, it might be running a little slower in real time. Okay, and we are at our target, Apoapsis. And then once we're above the atmosphere, it should set up the circularization. 795 meters per second. That main stage. So if I do that, that'll only give me a hundred meters per second of delta V in the upper. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and deploy the fairing. All right, I am going to have to turn on that RCS for just a second. And this is going to leave that uh, center stage in orbit, which is unfortunate. I had kind of hoped it would burn through a little bit more of its fuel during the ascent. So that it would have enough to kind of push us, you know, push the vehicle almost orbit and then have to switch over to this tank and then that wouldn't be able to fall back down. Alright, turn off that RCS. And what I could do is disengage the autopilot. Separate there, and then no, 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 no. Uh, put me on prograde, please. Actually, I think I am. 
I'm going to want to angle this up a little bit. That is not what I was expecting it to do. Alright, and then cut it. We're not quite in orbit yet. But we're almost there. And actually, that is kind of where I want it to be. Um, maneuver planner, what I want you to do is circularize at the apoapsis. There we go. 104 meters per second. We've got 535 delta V left. Those shiny domes. Why did it only warp for like a second? That was weird. Oh, because we are in the atmosphere. That's periapsis. Okay, well that was slightly unexpected, but I guess that's just kind of the way it is. Uh, we should be fine. Once we're through periapsis. As long as apoapsis doesn't come down too low, we'll be okay. All right, we're through periapsis. Go ahead and abort the node execution. So we're gonna have to recreate the, uh, the node. All right, we just needed to climb the back over 70. Okay, there we go. So now we'll try that again. Okay, there we go. I mean, not exactly circularized. But uh, good enough. We just need a higher orbit to be able to phase properly to do rendezvous four. That guy set his target. Now I actually do have like a proper rendezvous autopilot. I would like to be a little bit closer than that. All right, so this is gonna go ahead and run through all the maneuvers for rendezvous. What I might go ahead and do is just pause here while the rendezvous goes through. And then once we're uh, rendezvoused, then we'll begin the uh, the process here.
All right, so we are rendezvoused. Now, I am going to need to use a docking autopilot here. Because these will need to be docked to that as precisely aligned as possible. Because if, if these are kind of off kilter at like a couple of degrees, even, it'll, you know, cause inefficiencies at, or at the very worst, or like induce a torque and rotation in, in the vehicle at, you know, you know, inefficiency at best, you know, torque too strong for the gimbals to compensate for at worst, which will cause the whole vehicle to spin and who knows what to happen. So, um, we'll go ahead and decouple one of these. Switch to it. And back it off. There we go. Now, I want to make sure that we are controlling from here. Docking camera on. And then we need to pick a docking port to dock at. Um... That's as good as any. There we go. And then we're going to have our docking autopilot. And we're going to force roll to zero degrees. And we want... Oh, no. Speed limit just one meter per second and engage the autopilot. And I need to keep an eye on my electric charge. Oh, we got 2,000 electric charge. Oh, yeah, we got 2,000 electric charge. That should be plenty, actually. <laughs> And this thing is probably going to make all kinds of weird RCS noise. Let's just uh, the docking camera a little bit bigger so we can see it. Even though this is kind of hands off at this point. And you know. If they were doing this for real, it probably would be hands-off. There would, there would never be anyone manually flying this. This would all be, you know, computer-controlled auto-docking. There we are. All right, we are aligned. And on approach. Now, one thing I found in my kind of t prototype tests is that um, these ports can get a little finicky. Alright, we've got dock connection. And how are we looking? That looks very precise. Good alignment. Alright, excellent. Oh, and you are... You are... Um, you're kind of drifting all over the place here. Uh, switch over to retrograde to target. I'd like you to stay in the neighborhood. Uh, 
I'd like you to stay in the neighborhood. There we go. Actually keep you nearby. All right, let's go ahead and uh, undock this one. All right, same deal. We'll uh, go ahead and control from here. We're enable the docking camera. Whoa, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's far too large. There we go. Okay. So over there, we want to choose that port. Force roll, autopilot. And we just lost sunlight. That's okay. Now for the now for the next stage, it'll basically be another one of these that's going to dock onto here. So we'll have to remove or change the shape of this RCS tank. Probably just change its shape, move it there or something. We'll just rearrange these parts a little bit. And then we'll put a docking port on there. And then remove this docking port and put the engine on there. And then bring those up on a similar vehicle. And then dock them all on there like you to do is actually I'm going to go ahead and engage the speed limit there. Actually, let's go with 0 0.2. 0 0.2 meters per second. Want to be very, very gentle with how we we hit here because it's an it's an off center, it's an off center port. So when we have impact, when these actually make contact, it's, it tends to cause this end of the the tank to rotate in towards towards the reactors. Now the like the magnetic force that the ports have kind of caused that to become a little bit of a problem. Right as docking begins. And yeah, we're wobbling all over the place. And we're docked. But that's that's not that's not a good that's not a good dock. Okay. I wish that you could disable the docking force. I wonder if you can. Hmm. Let me check here. Okay. It doesn't look like it. But the, um, oops, 
The other vehicle is uh, kind of getting away from me here. So I prob probably will just have to redock that vehicle or that that part. So let me just get the other two moved over and docked as as well as you know can be achieved, and then uh, and then we'll proceed from there. Come on, get over there. Burn that uh, relative velocity off. Let's point at the target. This is why you do want to have a little extra, a little extra delta V kicking around. All right, give me like two meters per second. Okay. Uh, give me retrograde. I'm burning through electric charge here, but you know. All right, that should be good. Let's kill the relative velocity. Oh, actually, that's that's not. See, now I'm moving away from it. I want to move towards it so I have some time. All right, slip it around again. What are you? Something 62 kilometers out. Don't know what that is. You know what? It's fine. There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and decouple node. Uh, control from here. Docking camera on. I don't really need the docking camera. It's just kind of for... Uh... Because it looks cool, basically. All right, let's um, back away here. Give me some clearance. All right, limit you to one meter per second, force roll, autopilot engage. Alright, I'll go ahead and uh, pause it until we are ready to just about dock. Alright, here we are. What I figured out I'd have to do if I wanted to reduce that, that docking force is I'd have to go in there and edit the actual configuration files for these docking ports. And I had to figure out which mod it is that's adding those docking ports in and, and go make some config edits. Which I might just do, actually. But, um... 
There we go. See, now, if it... For whatever reason, sometimes it'll... It'll, you know, complete the dock before they, you know, right as they touch. But sometimes it doesn't and lets the thing bounce around for a bunch before it'll actually, you know, connect. So, well, is what it is, I guess. I'll make it work. Decouple that node. Switch. Alright, control from the docking port. Back us off. There we go. Yeah, we actually don't have a target. That's right. Okay. I did actually target the right docking port, right? Yeah, there we go. All right, force roll, autopilot engaged. And I'll be back in a sec with this thing and just about the dock. All right, coming in for docking. Let's get in there. Let's keep an eye on the docking port and see how it lines up once we actually do make contact. All right, that's good. That's a good connection. The only one that's uh, goofy alignment is this one, so I'm gonna have to fix that. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, see if I can make that uh, make it happen here. I'll go ahead, pause again, and fiddle with it, and then once it's good, then I'll be back. All right, it took a couple of attempts, but I think I got it good enough. It's not quite as precise as the other ones, but it's close enough. It's close enough. Engine gimbling and RCS should be able to deal with any torque that is induced by any offset there. So we are now good to go there. So that guy's over a kilometer away already. All right, let's go ahead and deal with this. Um, actually, I'd like to get a little bit closer. All right, now I wanna go ahead and switch to orbit and retrograde. There we go. All right, so that guy is now gone. Gonna re-enter and crash, so good. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and head back to the Space Center. And let's make some adjustments. for the next part that we're going to be bringing up here. Okay, so... Here's what we're going to do. For this, we're going to go ahead, we're going to take, take those off. I'm going to need a little bit more length out of that part. B 
because what we're going to do is we're going to take our engines. Right, which are going to be these guys. The Colossus. Slap those on there. Okay. Now this is going to definitely confuse. This is going to confuse the, the, um, confuse things here. So, hopefully we can kind of put that in there and make that work. We're going to need to actually delete the fairing um, for now. And here what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop this back into cylinder shape. Oh, actually... I'll probably just have to do is take that off completely. Um, we are going to need you to Whoa, why why are we not okay, something something strange is going on there. No, not procedural liquid, procedural RCS tank is what I need there. You are going to be two hundred and fifty millimeters by two and a half meters for RCS. That's going to carry two hundred and seventy RCS, um, maybe three seventy five, four oh five RCS. Yeah, that'll be fine, actually. Will it? Yeah, that'll give me a good margin. Okay, and then I want you to be uh, Atlas. There you go. And then we go ahead and do the same thing here with our procedural batteries. Let me back on there. Your length is going to be 125, 250. That allows you to carry 2,301 electric charge, which is perfect. All right, excellent. And then docking port. Right, there we go. Um, these docking ports can probably just stay on there. They're fine. And actually, they'll give me other options. They'll give me some other options if I want to make some modifications eventually or bolt something else onto the vehicle. So while they are extra parts we don't necessarily need right now, that um, they'll work. All right. What I actually like to try is cut that down to four, four boosters because I think the six is a bit too much. Throw the main booster or the main center engine into the initial stage, um, and then we should be we should be fine. Should be perfectly fine. Hopefully, it doesn't try to turn those on when this engine, when these engines light, because that would be very, very annoying. I mean, I could throw another. Like stack separator before that.
just to provide it as just to so that what what happened there why why did you lose your uh why did why, why did you lose your oh boy okay okay that's um that's goofy let's let's take that off of there Okay. What are, what are you what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Okay. Okay. Where where did it where did it put it? There you are. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes this 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 game does some weird stuff, and you know, that, that's fine. Okay, no, the whole the whole point of this was to throw on that stack, that decoupler. Not that we really necessarily need it. It's just. It helps create the the staging separations for the uh, the autopilot to figure out what it is that you're trying to actually do here, and that it doesn't actually fire up my engines ahead of when they because you know, I don't want those engines to turn on at all, right? Because these will kill my stored electric charge in like a second. And then that will kill the entire rocket because no electric charge means no control. Because it doesn't have a pilot on board. I could put a pilot on board. But that seems needlessly wasteful. Alright. Needlessly dangerous, too. Okay. Okay. Now, now that it's looking... proper. Uh, this should be the lower lithium tank. Save. And then let's build the fairing. Perfect. And make sure that you are still on clamshell deploy. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. Save. And... And that's ready to go. And I think I'll probably take care of all of that off screen launching this thing rendezvous docking all these parts because it's going to be basically the same thing we just did just again with slightly different parts and the only thing is we're going to be docking to a different port instead of docking on the side ports we're going to be docking on the on the front port um and so yeah what i'll do is i'll take care of that and then for next so we'll go and we'll end the episode here because we're, we're kind of long and you know, next time, um, I will have all of these docked. There actually is one other part that I want to design. Actually, before we, we end. This is saved, right? This is saved, so that's ready to go. There is one other part, actually, now that I think about it, that I want to design. It is the... Like the main structural spine of the vessel, um, to kind of separate the engine block with its, you know, 
nuclear reactors from the habitation section of the vehicle. So we want to have a kind of strong central spine. It's going to need to hold the radiators for the reactors. And it's going to need to have some docking ports on it to attach things like any kind of utility equipment that we want to bring along. Like if we want to deploy a probe to some extent, or um, if, you know, to, you know, dock a lander, because they're going to want to have a lander. Um, and some equipment for the landers, because we're going to want to be able to refuel the lander. So we'll probably want to bring up some auxiliary fuel tanks to bolt on there for whatever fuel the lander is going to be using. And, um, yeah. Just anything else I want to bring along. So, let's go ahead and get to that. So I kind of figured out what I wanted to do with that. And we're going to use these procedural structural elements as well. Because again, I mean, I don't necessarily need to use procedural structural elements. I could also use these, but I kind of felt that like this, this girder structure here um, didn't feel solid enough for what I wanted it to look like. I mean, we could do this, you know, that has this pressurized tube in there, but I didn't think that really was necessary either. So, and we have like the structural fuselage, but we need just ton of those. So we'll go with this, the procedural one. And I think we'll go with 10 meters in length for the first segment. And we're gonna stick with the Atlas texture, because I want this to look like it's like metal, like aluminum or stainless steel or something. And this is going to need a control unit, right? And then a battery. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the battery on the end here and we're going to change it into a cone shape. The top is going to be 1.25, the bottom is going to be 2.5, so the adapters are actually going to be like utility parts. Can I change the length a little bit? 447 millimeters. Okay. And that will get me a lot of electric charge, which is good because I want electric charge storage. Stick with the Atlas look. Yeah. Good. And then we'll put on Clampatron docky port dock that and then here what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this kind of structural node there another procedural structural element another 10 meters I want to go 10 meters I want this to be 30 meters long Maybe five meters should be enough. And then another one of these. And then another five meters um, segment with the right texture on it. And then we're going to do an RCS tank, which is also going to be a cone, where the top is going to be the 2.5. We're going to do the length of, what was that, 
447. Four four seven, so it has the same the same shape as that. Atlas. Alright, and the textures line up. How much RCS does that give me? 281. That should be plenty. That should be plenty. And then we'll throw Clampatron dock port on the top. And then we just need to give it some RCS control which is gonna be weird but we'll go ahead and put it put it there because it's gonna be pointing the RCS thruster is gonna be pointing unless we want to do it like uh, like these blocks and it'll be odd because The thrusters will be pointing in a weird direction. But it'll actually make sense. And it should actually work. And then down here. We flip it around like there, so you make sure that the uh, the nozzles are pointing away from the structure. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, and then we just need um, Actually, what I'll do here is do this. I'll take those parts off, throw you away. Get this docking node set up proper. Duplicate it. There we are. And so that'll give me docking ports to bring parts up. Whatever I wanna, wanna bring along on the mission. And then down here, we're gonna be doing the radiators, I think. I might want a little extra, a little extra room. So that's 12 meters, that's five meters. Actually, let's go with six and six just to give some room so 12 six and six and this is probably what 1.25 and probably overall two meters two meters so that's what 19 24 plus another four so that's 28 meters give or take Plus another half. So we're talking 29 to 30 meters in total length for that spar. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That'll do. Okay. So for these reactors, they need. 6,500 cooling, so I want to be able to satisfy that with a margin for error, or just a safety margin. So I'm thinking, six isn't going to work. Not unless I make the center bigger. So I'll have to do four. Let's see, four. Four. 
four. How do they look extended? Like they're gonna bump into each other. Yeah. So if we retract that, we just do it like that, then we know we'll get enough clearance. So that's eight. How much of these? A thousand kilowatts. So that would be enough for one of the two reactors. So then if we do another set, that should cover both reactors. And then what I might do is throw a little extra. Mm. See, these do 1500. So four of those is what? 6,000? And now so they look like extended. So we would need three sets of that. But they also rotate, so they would bump into each other at six. Now, extended, how would, what would these look like? Three sets of these. Or three sets of those. Now this is uh, one, two, five. So we would still need, how many? Four would be five thousand. So three sets of these. look like that. I could do something like that. Or I could do three sets of these. One, two, three. I wouldn't have a lot of clearance from that docking port. So it would limit what we could put on that docking port if we were to use these. I think these might be better. We'll 
We'll go with three sets of of those. Okay. And then this really wouldn't need much to lift. Right, a 375 would probably be would probably be be good. Or one of these fairing bases. A two Two and a half, two, seven, five, no, two and a half. I want to go two and a half. I mean, this thing does not mass much at all. It's 16 tons. I wouldn't need anything ridiculous. Just for just for looks, we'll go for three seven five on this payload, and then that would let me. And maybe I'll go cryogenic. Maybe I'll go cryogenic with these procedural liquid tanks. Oh, actually, um, we would want the upper stage to be controllable, right? With some power. Yes. It's probably overkill, but fine. Then payload. Right? Yes. And probably some... Solar panels, and these would be sufficient. There. Yeah, those would work. And then we'll go with like a cryogenic look. 375. Or, no. No, not cryogenic. Let's, uh... That's overkill. Yeah, we'll go with that. And then what engines would I have available at 375? I'd like to use something different. Maybe. Uh, you know what, I keep changing my mind here. Because I do want to do something slightly different looking. You know, I did change my mind, we're going to go cryogenic with procedural liquid tanks. There we go. Uh, diameter 375 will go with maybe three meters or four meters length. For texture, we'll go with the cryogenic orange tanks. Right. I'll throw a set of reaction wheels there. And then for cryogenic engines at 375 we have that one. 468 in the vacuum specific impulse which is the best we have. Oh, I need to make sure that uh, tank type is set to uh, 
Hydrolox. There we go. What are you guys? You guys are nothing. There we go. And then we would need stack separators. We have this one. Decouplers and stack separators. See, decouplers separate in one each uh, direction. Stack separators eject in both. There we go. All right, and then we'll get another procedural liquid tank. Uh, let's make it 15 meters. 15 meters. Sure. We'll give it the uh, cryogenic orange look. Make sure you're a cryogenic tank. And what engines do I have again? We need a cryogenic engine that has good thrust. 1800 kilonewtons, 2600 kilonewtons. Uh, there we are. And that should do. But just for just for uh, for giggles here, let's throw. Uh, let's throw these on here and do a couple little SRBs. Why? Because they look cool. Those SRBs or maybe these SRBs? Or maybe those? Not quite. Uh, we should be able to go with the smaller uh, separators. Is that on there proper? Proper? Yeah, it is. Okay. And then I actually offset that on purpose. And then you go with the second one like that. All right. And so we have the four fire with the with the center, right? I'll give it a little bit more kick off the pad. And that should be good. And we'll throw our uh we'll throw our structural on there. Or our uh launch clamps. And let's 
payload. Fairing. And that is a comically ridiculous fairing. I am going way over time on this episode, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. You know what? That's so ridiculous that I want to launch it. This is the um, uh, main spar. Main spar one. Okay, save that. And uh, and yeah, let's launch it. And then we'll end the episode with this thing's launch. We'll get it in orbit, and then um, I'll worry about rendezvousing it and all that other kind of stuff off screen. And then, uh, oh, I didn't put an action group in there to deploy the radiators. It's all right. It's all right. I can do it manually. It'd be really annoying to do it manually, but I'll do it manu manually. Because those radiators are never going to be retracted, so once I get them deployed, then they're just going to stay there. And there it is. <laughs> that is something else. All right, uh, what's my staging? Check it. Make sure we're good. Okay, so those guys are going to burn out. And then we're going to stage them off and then separate and then fire. The fairing will go when it goes. Okay. Because I this thing might get a bit weird aerodynamically, I'm going to let the uh, autopilot take care of it. Let's uh, let's fire it. Yeah, I figured the center tank was going to shut off, or the center engine was going to shut off, um, or throttle down significantly. Okay, good. That did not come back and impact. I was a little worried that that was going to impact on the center, the center tank. Where are we at? And uh, we've got 20, 20 seconds left on main engine. Then we'll have stage separation and second engine ignition. There we go, main engine cut off. Second engine start. And this thing has what? 1500 meters per second of delta V uh, uh, left on it. So it should be plenty. to get this thing where it needs to go. All right. 
So that should be in a fairly decent suborbital. There goes the fairing. Those are some fairings. It's a 30 meter long fairing. Actually, probably more than that. Maybe more like 31, 32 meters. There's the final push, just about done to get us on a nominal orbital trajectory. All right, there we are. Okay, so with that launch complete, we'll go ahead and stop here for today. And uh, for next episode, I'll have this this docked. I'll have the engine parts, the actual uh, the other engine components docked and connected. And then we will work on designing the habitation module that will uh, be our Kerbal's home for about what was it, ten years for this mission. So yeah, that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an important piece of hardware. All right, so for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.